Hello everyone, let us begin. So we are very close to beginning to actually invest in the stock market and there are still some things you need to know before we start that. Now, in last night's video, our part one of the series, we covered what is stock and what are the common stock indexes. In this video, we're going to cover why should you invest in the stock market. Now, many of you have brought up, you know, very good points like Mr. Jarrett. Isn't investing in the stock market basically gambling? You're gambling on a company to do well and make you lots of money. I'm like, yeah, you know, that, that's that's kind of true. Um, how do you know which company to invest in? What happens when you invest in a bad company? Do you lose all of your money? And you guys make very good points, but in this video, I'm going to show you something you may not know that may change your mind about gambling in the stock market. All right, so first thing you need to know is that there are two different types of stock investments, if you will. So many of you may have heard the term mutual fund thrown around. A mutual fund is simply an investment program that you put your money into and have it invested and managed by a professional, like a professional financier, a stockbroker, someone who is paid big bucks to manage your money. So if you hear things like Merrill Lynch, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, uh, Bank of America. These are all companies that offer actively managed mutual funds. They are actively managed because there is a real live human being or a very large group of human beings that are constantly trying to beat the market. Now, when I say beat the market, I am referring to if stocks were left alone. So think about the 2,800 and so stocks in the stock market. Think about the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. How, how would they do on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, decadely, 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 I guess that works, decadely basis if left to themselves? Let's say they return an average of 7% per year for the past three years. An actively managed fund, they seek to beat that number. Your actively managed fund was successful. The person managing your money did a very good job if they can get you 7.5% or 8% or 14% or whatever it is. So actively managed funds, I want to emphasize, they pay someone or actually technically, excuse me, you pay someone in fees to manage your money. So if you go to TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Merrill Lynch, Bank of America, you say, I want to open a mutual fund. You will give them X number of dollars and they will charge you a fee based on how much money you give them. And they will also charge you a fee based on how much money you make because these experts, you know, generally know what stocks to pick. Now, if you're like me, you do not have time to sit around 12 hours a day and try to figure out do the number crunching, which stocks are going to go up and which stocks are going to go down, which is why it may be beneficial to pay someone to do it for you. So there are some pros with actively managed mutual funds. A pro is that they tend to outperform the market in the short term. Again, when I say outperform the market, if the market were left alone, what would the percentage gain or loss be? In the short term, so we're talking, you know, a year to two, maybe three years. I wouldn't go over three years. They tend to outperform the market on the short term. So let's say stocks grew at an average of 3% in the past three years. An actively managed fund may grow 4, 5, 6%. And again, I want to emphasize, guys, I say tend to outperform the market, not guaranteed at all. What if the person or group of people managing your fund make a bad call and sell stock when they should have bought stock or bought stock they should have sold or totally neglected a stock that ended up making, you know, quadrupling its profit margin in one year? So that's what I mean when I say tends to outperform the market. Now, there are some cons with actively managed mutual funds. The biggest cons, I kind of already talked about that, is that the fees associated with them. So let's say you invest $10,000 with Bank of America. You go to Bank of America this week and you say, hello, I want to talk to your stockbroker. I want to open a mutual fund. And they say, okay, I'm the stockbroker. Give me your money and I'll make you lots of money. What they really mean to say is, give me your money and I'll make both of us lots of money. So let's say you give them $10,000. They're going to take a small percentage of that. Okay, cool. You know, they're doing you a service that you got to do that. But also, based on any gains you make, they also charge you based on that. So if you make $1,000 in profit in one year, they might charge you $100 or $200 because of them doing so well managing your money. All right. So the first type of investment is an actively managed mutual fund. And again, an actively managed mutual fund 
is simply an investment program that you put your money into to have it invested by a professional. The professional is actively, like every day they are they are manipulating it. They are selling stock, buying stock. Like they, they mess with it all the time, trying to make sense on the dollar, so on and so forth. It's an active process. Now, the complete opposite of that is what we call a passively managed index fund. Now, let me pause here. If you recall in part one of this series on investing, I showed you all some of the common stock market indexes, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P 500. There are many, 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 if not hundreds of other indexes, but those are the three most common. So remember, that's what an index is. It, indexes attempt to show a general trend of a particular sector of a market, like the S&P 500 is the 500 largest stocks. The Dow is the 30 largest stocks, and the NASDAQ are tend to be measure tech more technology oriented stocks okay now a passively managed index fund is an investment program that attempts to mimic the movement of the stock market over the course of time so let's pause right there and do some comparing and contrasted so in an actively managed mutual fund they attempt to beat the market over the short term but a passively managed index fund seeks only to mimic the market if the market grows four percent you want your index fund to grow 4%. If the market loses 2%, your index fund is probably gonna lose 10%. So what the crap, why would someone even consider that? Why is this even a thing if all it ever does is average? It just does what the market does. So I want you guys to think about that. Why would someone invest in a passively managed index fund when all it ever does is do whatever the market does? Don't you wanna do better than the market? Okay, and when I say passively managed, here's what I mean. It's passive. There is not a paid professional. There is no one you pay to manage your money on a daily basis. There is no one researching rigorously 12 hours a day, buying stocks, selling stocks, trading stocks, researching this company. You invest your money and you leave it alone and whatever the stock market does, the stock market does. If the stock market loot has a bad day, you had a bad day. If the stock market has a good day, you had a good day. If the stock market has an average year, you had an average year as well. Now, there are some pros to this. Over the course of time, I'm talking five years plus, passively managed index funds tend to do better than actively managed mutual funds. So think about this. In the short term, less than three years, actively managed is the way to go. But over the course of time, it gets more and more difficult to predict what companies are going to do good. Like, guys, here's the thing. No one can predict the future. No stockbroker can predict the future. You know what? This is a terrible example. We could find out Google is run by terrorists and their stock market and their stocks crash and people lose hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. I mean, no one can predict such things. Um, some company, like General Electric or Boeing, could declare bankruptcy tomorrow because of some issue we never even imagined. This stuff can and does happen. So the farther a stock broker or stock and analyst tries to predict in the future, it gets harder and harder to do it. Which is why in the short term, like you can look at the numbers and predict what's going to happen to like public stock or Walmart stock over the course of the coming years within reason, you know, a reasonable estimate. But once you get past about three years, it becomes very shady and very gray, perhaps 50 shades of gray. Huh, that was a joke. It was unintentional, but it was kind of funny. All right. Now to contrast that, a passively managed index fund tends to do better over the course of time. And I'll show you an example here in a little bit. Now a con, as I already mentioned, mutual funds tend to have higher rates of return in the short term. So let's continue our LEQ. Why should you invest in the stock market? What I have here is the average return per year for the past hundred or so years. So let's take a look here. The stock market opened in the early 1900s. When you invested stock, you made about 9.9% .9 return on your investment. That is awesome. That means if you invested $100, you received back $9.96 of that. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but bear with me here. Think about compound interest here, guys. In the 1910s, not too good of a year. 1920s, a great year. Now, let me ask you guys this. What happened in the 1930s that people still talk about today, you learned about in your history classes? The Great Depression. The stock market did very poorly that year. So think about it. In the 1920s, we're up, we're up, we're doing great. People are retiring early. We're buying Lamborghinis. Uh, Lamborghinis weren't around back then. And then, crap, the stock market crashes. 
1940s. What was going on in the 1940s? World War II. What happened in the 1950s? The baby boomers. America emerged as the world superpower. We have not had a boom like we did in the 1950s. 1950s was a very good year. 1960s, Vietnam was going on. 1970s, uh, we had the civil rights movement. 1980s, another good year. 1990s, another good year. If you invest in the stock market in the late 1970s and you retired in the late 1990s, you did very, very well. Now, the 2000s, so we're talking 2000 to 2010, that's called the lost decade. I'm not going to quiz you on that or anything, but it's called the lost decade because that's when we had the recession of 2008. Companies really stagnated. Now, in this particular table, it doesn't show you what's been going on the past five years, but the past five years from 2010 to 2015 or so, the stock market has grown approximately 13%. So we are doing very well. Now, here's what I want you guys to realize. If you invested your money in 1930 and took your money out in 1939, you did not do very well at all. If you invested your money in 1980 and took it out in 1989, you did really well. If you invested your money in 1970 and took it out in 1979, you did okay. You know, 5% on $1,000, that's, that's not too bad. But here's what I want you guys to realize. If you were to average all of these numbers together, including the really crappy decades, including the Great Depression of the 1930s, including the recession of 2008, if you were to average all these numbers together, you would get about 10%. You'd get about 10%. Not bad at all right there. So I would like to show you all what this looks like on a graph. All right, so I'm going to show you what the stock market looks like on this particular graph. All right, so we are going to have, this is going to be, I'm going to put V for value of the stocks. This is not entirely, I'm going to put V for value. I'm going to put down here T for time. Let's start at 1900s and let's go all the way up to 2015. All right, cool. And you know what? I'm going to choose the S&P 500 index. So this, this is for the 500 largest stocks on the stock market. These are the most of the companies you've heard of, you know, the Walmarts, the Targets, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, so on and so forth. So here is what the stock market has looked like over the course of the past 115 years. And what I'm about to show you is not too much of an exaggeration. Now, I'm not going to do 500 stocks. I'm just going to give you guys some exaggerations. All right. So just, just watch, kick back and watch for a second. Doop, 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 doop. So I'm just kind of just drawing lines here. You know, some stocks do really well, holy crap, and then they crash. Some stocks don't do very well, don't do very well. Then Steve Jobs becomes CEO and the stock goes way up. Some stocks start off awesome and then they just suck. Some stocks go up and down and up and down and do a loop de loop. Okay, you can't do a loop de loop, but that was fun. Uh, some stocks do stuff like this. Some stocks start off really well, they do even better, their CEO dies and they get another good CEO and they are just awesome. Okay, so here's the deal. This is what the stock market looks like, all right? And I'm, again, this is not really an exaggeration. This is what the stock market looks like. Now, pretend there's 500 different stocks there. So here's the thing. In an actively managed mutual fund, someone will try to do a very good job of picking the funds that do really well. So I'm looking at the value here. So like this fund did really well. Whatever these companies were did really well. These companies are doing good. That one looks like it's going down. This one looks like it's going up. These companies all did really well. An actively managed mutual fund tries to ignore companies that tank and burn like this one, like this one. And it tries to do better than the average. Now, a passively managed index fund tries to get all of these stocks. In a passive managed index one, you basically buy all of these stocks. Now, here is the thing, class, and here's what I want to leave you. So if you were to take that cluster mess of stocks I just showed you, if you were to collapse them all together, do some statistics, if you were to include the good ones and the bad ones, let me tell you what you'd get. You would get a line that looks a lot like this. It's not bad. That's positive. It's increasing. And in fact, it just so happens it's increasing at a rate 
of about 10% per year. So guys, think about this. Since the 1900s, the past 120 some odd years, that's a rough estimate, even with World War I, World War II, Great Recession, Vietnam, Korean War, civil rights movements, terrorist attacks, many different presidents, despite all of this, the stock market's growing on an average of 10% per year. So how do you get that 10% number? How do you not buy a stock that drops and goes down? How do you identify stocks that do really well? So I'm gonna leave you all with that. So in conclusion, I know I kind of let you all on a cliffhanger there. But in conclusion, I am going to explain that 10% number in much more detail in class the following days. So what I want you guys to know is why should you invest in the stock market? And the answer is because over the course of time, that is a key phrase, guys. I'm not talking about the past five years, the past 10 years. Over the course of time, the stock market has given investors an average return of 10% on their investment. That is darn good. Now, think about the examples we've done using compound interest with a 10% return on investment. Remember, we're trying to retire millionaires here. So I will end the video there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in class.